Hi, my name is Dr. Philip Ratzlowski from the Advanced Foot and Ankle Center of San Diego and welcome to The Fix. Today we are excited to have joining with us Dr. Gregory Jiriga from Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about it yourself. Um, I'm in a group practice with two other guys called Trinity Foot and Ankle. Uh, I've been practice uh, 36 years. Uh, and my practice has evolved to this point to uh, pretty much almost all deformity correction and charcoal foot reconstruction. I started practice in 87. And, um, uh, and at that time, I was starting to see some of these diabetic patients come in uh, and they had horrible deformities and there was not a lot of you know, good literature out there. And admittedly, education at that point was not very good on how to take care of these people other than amputation. Uh, what we know now today, if people go on amputation, their mortality rate is, you know, within five years because of other issues. So that kind of spurred my interest to, you know, what, how can I help these people save their legs? So we have a problem that right. there's this condition Charcot and a lot of diabetics are getting them. They get these deformities, ulcers and infections. We have some surgical solutions kind of rudimentary. Right. And you're kind of starting to do surgery at that time when there's a big problem that needs a solution and you start getting introduced to a new aspect of the solution which is external fixation. Correct. So you brought with you brought with you today an amazing case. Let, talk about this case and tell us you know how this patient comes to you and how you work them up in the office. So this gentleman was uh, he's in his later 60s. He's referred to me from a wound care center. He had a chronic lateral malleolar wound and actually they referred to me for just a surgical debridement. And when he first came in and I looked at him and, and we shot our scout x-rays, I knew that his deformity was all rear foot, was all in the ankle and the subtalar joint. His horrible valgus positioning. So essentially he was walking on his medial mal. And you know, five years had gone by, he had this ulcer kind of wax and wane. And so eventually, you know, I had chatted with him about, hey, I, I can really fix this with you. You know, we're gonna be friends for a long time. This is a stage procedure, but I can give you your, uh, your, your life back in that you can walk more comfortably in some sort of accommodative shoe gear or brace, but, but at the time he, he had a, a non-braceable foot. So m many times you know, we'll get these referrals from like a wound care center where they just look at the wound, but they don't realize that the bone disintegrated under it or the recognition of the reason for the wound is the deformity. Correct. So you're able to explain that to the patient and then sometimes the patients are hesitant. And in this case, you know, it took a little while to convince the patient. Yes, and, and to this day, this, this still goes on. Even when I have to chat with an internist or some other specialist, I said, well, just Greg, just go ahead and just, just clean up the wound. Go, no, that's not the issue. You know, the mechanics behind the, uh, is the issue that's causing this wound. If we fix their mechanical problem, then their wound will improve. So it's important that we educate the, 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 the public out there, and that includes wound care doctors and internists and understanding is that, wounds are many, many times from deformity and you need to send it to somebody that knows how to do deformity analysis. Right. right. So this patient comes in your office, tell me what you're seeing on the x-rays. So on the, on the lateral projection, uh, you'll see that if you, you look from his TN joint and distally, his whole uh, midfoot and rear foot looks really good. So it's all rear foot generated, not forefoot. And on the uh, calcaneal axial, he's got a severe valgus positioning. And on the uh, uh, anterior ankle view, you'll see he can, has a talus in here. So I know he has the anatomy to now, I can, I can kind of manipulate the anatomy with the TL hex system to put a miter frame on to take him out of Aquinas to diastase his ankle joint, his subtalar joint, move those bones around to now get him anatomically lined up where I can bring him back for stage two. So many of these cases, when we have them, the first thing we should really be telling the patients is, is that odds are you need more than one surgery yes. and, and, you, and we're usually planning on two surgeries. Correct. So in the first surgery, to be clear, when, when you say the word diastasis, what you're meaning is that you're stretching out everything. Yes. Because everything's tight from the tension over time. Correct. So you have to slowly stretch it out and that can be done with the computer program and the HEX program. Correct. So in the operating room, you put on the device mm -hmm. and tell us how that works with the computer system app. So we put on the device and then we take multiple measurements with our, our uh, orthofix reps in the room uh, for our, our uh, deformity and then where we want to go for correction. And then that gets uploaded into the computer and then the computer spits out a prescription over whatever we think it takes to get that point so everything is lined up. So the key is understanding how to put on the TL-HEX device. Mm -hmm. 
understanding deformities and measuring deformities and the magnitudes of the deformities. Mm -hmm. And then you're basically telling the computer where you want the segment to line up and how fast you want it to get. Yeah, it's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So that's done. How long do you wait between that first case and the second case? And when do you decide to move over to the second case? So once we have him lined out and we, you know, I typically we distract him in one half to one millimeter per day. But once we get them you know, lined up and everything starts to settle down, it's typically about 14, about two weeks after we have him in our good position that I bring him back for stage two. Because when I have him kind of locked down in there, the soft tissue really kind of settles down. The tissue's more pliable. It doesn't have that glycosylated feeling when you're kind of cutting through a, you know, a hard boiled egg. And tell us about stage two. So stage two, uh, we brought him back and then the uh, miter frame came off and I did a, a AHN nail, the orthofix uh, ankle hind foot nail. It was a 300 nail, so we did a TCC fusion. So it fuses his uh, talus to his tibial profound and his subtalar and his subtalar joint to the calcaneus. So how does this help the patient besides having a floppy ankle that's in the wrong direction, now that you have the foot under the ankle, but the ankle's not moving anymore. So how, how does that help the patient get around? You know, they still get movement uh, ultimately through the mid tarsal joint, you know, later down the line. You know, but at least we have everything lined up anatomically as they should be. And then we can brace that with an Arizona brace afterwards, which we put everybody in an ASIO for one year after fusion. You know, I find that many people get confused between hands and feet. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that the foot needs to be a rigid propulsion system. Right. As opposed to hands, which need fine motor skill, you want the foot to be a, a rigid propeller for mm -hmm. the propulsion phase of gait. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is creating that so that they can walk. And that's how they walk when, and their cardiac and vascular function works better because right. we're, we're instead of being in a wheelchair or a prosthetic. Correct. So this patient, after how long are you letting them walk when once the second surgery is done? Uh, about two weeks afterwards. So again, I walked them fairly quickly. Um, again, I referenced an article of Kraus and Vasa from the 70s, which uh, as you get them moving, you just drive more blood flow through the lower extremity, the tibia, and then I know that they're gonna heal up quicker and more solid. How's the patient doing now? Great, he's back cutting his yard and mowing his lawn and walking his dog. And I'm, I'm assuming the psychological component and the, you know that the independence is a very important thing yes, for them. Yes, absolutely. Very nice, wonderful. Thank you for sharing with us thank this clear you. case. And thank you for watching us on The Fix.